So in today's lesson, we're going to look at calculating square roots and estimating square roots later on. So I put the question out there to you in the class, what the square root was. And the examples I got were something along the lines of uh, the square root of a number like 9, for example, is the number that multiplies by itself, or that when multiplied by itself, is equal to the number under the root sign, like 9. So the square root of 9, for example, would be equal to 3 because 3 times 3 is equal to 9. The square root of 16 would be equal to 4, because 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So square roots can be used to find, or for example, uh, a missing side of a right triangle, if we're using Pythagoras' theorem. So in a right triangle with side lengths of... Uh, let's say a known side length of 9, an unknown side length of x, and a hypotenuse of 15. So the long side is 15, the hypotenuse. We can use Pythagoras' theorem, which states that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where a and b are the two short sides, or the legs of the triangle, and c is the hypotenuse. So in this case, we've got 9 squared plus x squared is equal to 15 squared. Now, if we're looking for x squared, we need to isolate it. So we're subtracting 9 squared from both sides. We figure out what the squares are. So 225 minus 81 subtracts to give 144. We take the square root of both sides, and we get x is equal to 12. Now, that disappeared fairly quickly. You might want to back up and check that out. The question up top there is number 13, I believe. It's about the TV. You can read that question and see if you can solve it. And then here we've got you know, sample questions from the textbook. So if I had the square root of 49 and then two blanks, you know, blank times blank, you could fill it up with 7 times 7. If you're finding the square root of a fraction, especially a fraction with perfect squares like 4 over 9 uh, or 16 over 36, okay, you can take the square root of top and bottom to get your answer. So square root of 4 over 9 is 2 over 3, and the square root of 16 over 36 would be 4 over 6. In a case like 729 over 81, you've got a couple of choices. You could take the square roots to get 27 over 9 and divide that to get 3, or you can divide the 729 by 81, uh, which actually equals 9, and then take the square root of 9 and get 3. So your homework assignment for this on page 84, 4, 5, 6, 10, 14, 21, And then I think I've got one other question coming up here. Oh, yeah, number 21. Sorry about that speed, speed back and forth. Oh, I did something on 21 with the circle. You may want to back it up and pause it. Okay, the other part was estimating square roots. So estimating square roots, we know how to find the square roots of things like you know, 100 and 64 and 9 and 16 because they're perfect squares. And that list of known perfect squares, you should be comfortable with all the way up to 15 squared, which is equal to 225. Now, but what happens if we're looking for the square root of a number that's not in that list of perfect squares? Something like the square root of 48. So we know that 48 is between 36 and 49. It's pretty close to 49, actually. We know that the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7. So that would mean that the square root of 48 must be pretty close to 7, like 6.9. Um, another example, if we're estimating the square root of 110. So 110 between 100 and 121. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 121 is 11. 110 is marginally closer to 100 than it is to 121. So maybe 10.4, 10.45, something like that. Then you compare it to your calculator. So do the estimation first, and then check it with your calculator. Just a few questions here for you on page 89, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10. All right, good luck with that, and uh, come back for more tomorrow.